There is no bad that something good doesn't come from it. Mexican proverb. Sylvia, Santa Ana, California. I'm so proud of you, Sylvia's father, said Sylvia's father. So proud. He stepped back to admire his daughter in her graduation cap and gown. This is an important day, her mother said, straightening the red and blue tassel hanging down from Sylvia's square mortarboard. A mortarboard are those little graduation hats that people wear. I know, Sylvia said. She knew that when she stepped on the stage and shook hands with the principal and reached for her high school diploma, she would be representing her entire family. You look so grown up, her mother said. You're such a beautiful lady, young lady. Sylvia hugged her mother. Don't make me cry. Come on, her father said, taking her mother's arm. Let's take our seats. Just a few minutes later, a band, the band played Pomp and Circumstance while the Santa, Santa Ana High School class of 1955 entered the auditorium. Sylvia and her classmates marched through the crowd and filled the front rows. After she took her seat, Sylvia admired her ring, gold, her ring, gold with the faceted red stone and class of 1955 etched on the sides. Etched means it's carved into the stone or into the band. Her long, thin fingers and neatly trimmed fingernails reminded her of her father's hands, always so clean. Thinking of him, she felt a touch of regret that he had never had a chance to wear a class ring of his own. After the principal welcomed everyone, the class valedictorian took the stage. A valedictorian is somebody who's chosen to represent the class and who often makes a speech at the graduation. Fellow students, we are coming of age at a unique time in our nation's history. He said, this is a time of unparalleled opportunity for students of every race and every color. One year ago, the United States Supreme Court in the case of Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka unanimously ruled that schools could no longer separate children by race. We, all of us, Stand on the threshold of a new day. Equality in education is the first step toward equality in opportunity. Sylvia felt her heart blossom with pride. Equality in opportunity. That was what her father had been fighting for. His lawsuit had focused on children in Orange County. But after he won, so we know what happened, he won. It inspired the governor of California to make school segregation illegal all over the state. The Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka lawsuit was a lot like her father's case, only it protected children all over the country. So remember, I told you, this is kind of the narrative based on a true events. So Sylvia's father really did sue the school district and he won. And after he won, the governor made it illegal in the entire state of California to segregate schools based on race. And then somebody sued the, the government in Kansas and it became illegal in the entire country. But one of the big um, starting points was Sylvia's father's lawsuit. Each one of you has a mission in life, the valedictorian continued. Your mission is not something you learn in school. It cannot be told to you by someone else. It comes from deep inside you. It is the thing you have been put on this earth to do. Sylvia thought back to the day she had been turned away from Westminster School because her skin was brown and her last name was Mendez. She looked left and right at her classmates and saw white, brown, and black faces. My father helped make this happen, she thought. My father helped bring us together. In that moment, Sylvia savored the full impact of what her father had done for her. No, not just for her, for Mexican students across California. Her father had taken a stand and made the world a better, fairer, and more just place. And all these years later, she and her classmates were reaping the rewards of his efforts. You did it, Dad. You're the one I'm proudest of today. After the speeches were over, uh, the diplomas had been handed out, the principal turned to the audience and said, I now present the graduates of the Santa Ana High School class of 1955. As one, Sylvia and her classmates took off their graduation caps, tossed them into the air, and cheered.
So that's the epilogue where it ties the whole story together at the end and gives you all the answers to your questions. This next part is called an afterword. In lots of historical fiction books or um, yeah, historical fiction in particular, there's a part at the end called the afterword. You can see it right there. And that will often explain to you what parts of the story were true and what parts were added to. Um, most of you have this section in your historical fiction novels that you have at home. The ones that you um, took from the classroom. A note about the Mendez family. So this is the true, all the true stuff. Sylvia and her brothers did briefly attend Westminster School before the lawsuit and its appeal were finally resolved. After leaving the asparagus farm, the Mendez family returned to Santa Ana, California. Sylvia graduated from high school, attended California State University in Los Angeles, and became a registered nurse. Gonzalo Mendez died of heart disease in 1964 at age 51. Felicita, Felicitas Mendez, Sylvia's mother, lived until 1998, just long enough to see the groundbreaking for a new school in Orange County named Gonzalo and Felicitas Mendez Elementary School in honor of their accomplishments. In October 2007, a U.S. postage stamp was issued honoring the 60th anniversary of Mendez v. Westminster. In 2011, President Barack Obama awarded Sylvia the Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian honor. A note about the Munamitsu family. The Munamitsu family stayed on the farm in Westminster for several years after the end of World War II. They invited a number of displaced Japanese families to stay with them and work on the land in the years after the internment camp closed. Even after the internment camps, my father still believed in the American dream, said Aki. He wanted to help other families save money and start over. He did not believe in self-pity. Japanese Americans lost an estimated $200 million when they were forced into the camps. Some of them recovered a small part of their financial losses through the 1948 Evacuation Claims Act and another redress payment through the Civil Liberties Act of 1988, which offered an official apology and payment of $20,000 to each surviving internee. The Munamitsu family received their payment and donated the entire sum to the Japanese American Museum in Los Angeles. So what that's explaining is that um, in um, 1988, the government issued an apology uh, to all of the Japanese American um, people who were put in these internment camps, recognizing that what it had done was illegal and immoral. I'm sorry that my camera is moving so much. It's wobbling right now. Sylvia Mendez and Aki Munamitsu both live in Southern California. They lost touch with each other for years, but were reacquainted as adults and remain friends to this day. The end of school segregation in America. On February 18, 1946, almost one year after Gonzalo Mendez versus the Westminster School District of Orange County was filed, Sylvia's father won his lawsuit. Much of the courtroom dialogue in Chapter 11 was written exactly that way in the court record. The judge in the case, U.S. District Court Judge Paul J. McCormick, ruled that Mexican children in Orange County, California, had the legal right to go to the same schools as the white children. More specifically, the judge ruled that California law did not allow local governments to create segregated schools. In his written opinion, the judge held that segregation, in this case, separating students by race, fosters antagonisms in the children and suggests inferiority where none exists. In other words,